Gentlemen, as time we got going today, I'll introduce our speaker, who I stole from the Merritt Island Fuel. <laughs> His name is Pastor Steve Young. He is the pastor and has been since about 2020 of Islander Alliance Church in Merritt Island. And I kind of Googled the Alliance thing, and it, it's like it's a little bit like art or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot of churches that work together. And um, Pastor Steve is going to uh, teach us today about living uh, outside our comfort zone, which I think almost goes without saying these days. But he's going to give us a positive spin on that. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay, it's, it's, it's great to be here with you. Um, sometimes I'll use my notes, sometimes I won't. Um, and I don't see a clock, so when it's time, just tell me, okay? <laughs> I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> there we go. Good. Well, it, again, it's good to be here. My name is Steve Young, as um, Bill had shared. Um, I've lived in Florida for about four years, um, since 2020. I'm married to my wife, Michelle, who we've been married 30 years. We have four children. Um, two boys are the oldest, and then two girls. Our oldest son is um, in the Air Force, stationed in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have one grandson. And our other son is living in Ohio, where we lived previous to moving here to Florida, and is married. And then our two daughters um, moved here with us when we moved from Ohio. Um, our oldest son is 29. I'll see if I can get this straight. Our oldest son is 29. Our next son is 27. Our daughter uh, is 24. And then our youngest daughter is 22. And um, God has used um, just the opportunity to move to Florida. Um, you know, I want to share about how God takes us outside of our comfort zones. When I was younger, I well, I grew up in a Christian home. Um, my, my parents took me to church. I'm the youngest of five kids. And they, 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 they taught me, you know, Christian values. I went to Sunday school. And one of the first um, set of verses that I learned was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Other than John 3, 16 was the first one that I learned. But Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So, some translations say he'll make your path straight. Now, when I think about that verse, okay, and I'll just break it down real quickly. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with everything we have, with, with our, our, our family, with our finances, with our future. Um, our occupations and everything. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Don't lean on your own understanding. A lot of times we live our lives in a way that um, we, we don't understand things. So we don't, we say, okay, God, I'm not going to do that because I don't understand it. Or, or I don't know if any of you men are like this, but I have the tendency to, I like, I would like to be able to see the outcome before you know, actually doing things. But God doesn't, doesn't make it that way. Um, and he promises, or he says, that he'll direct our paths. Now, the misconception of that is that, that he'll direct our paths, but our paths aren't always um, smooth. And growing up in the church, you know, I thought that things, you know, would go smooth in life. And that's a misconception, or a misperception on my part. And growing up in the church, like I said, my parents took me to church and I became a Christian at about age nine. A Sunday school teacher led me to the Lord and things were going fine and all that. At age 10, my parents sat me and my brother down and they said, we're getting a divorce. And so then, you know, you ask the question, okay, God, um, I give my life to you, and then you say, then this happens. And God took me outside my comfort zone because I had been part of a family unit, and, you know, then we get this kind of announcement. 
Now, there was a lot that took place to lead up to this divorce that my parents um, had. But I can give praise to God because my parents were divorced for a year. Um, they worked through some issues. And after that year, they reconciled, remarried, and were married for 35 or 40 years after that. So I praise God for that. But again, as a little kid at 10 years old, he took me outside my comfort zone of where I was. And I believe I've learned over the years that God, when he wants us to grow, he makes us uncomfortable. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he, okay, he wants us to suffer. But I've found from my experience that I, when I grow the most is when I'm, God places me in a position where I'm not comfortable, where I have to rely totally and completely on him. If you go on a little bit further, as I was growing up, I hit junior high school. And those years are very trying, very testing. And, you know, I, I hung out with my friends and, and, you know, my parents would say, okay, Steve, don't do this, don't do that. And just like a, a junior high kid, I would do just the opposite of what my parents would say. And they would say, Steve, you have to listen. But then I'd all end up paying the consequences for my actions. God placed me in a position where I was uncomfortable. You go to, I went to high school. I was not a good student. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I hated school. I didn't like school. I did the bare minimum to get, to get through. And when I was in high school, I was involved in the church youth group. And I was always reminded back of those verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Well, I committed my life to God again and he used those high school years um, to, to help me grow. But being in high school, I, I like to play sports and hang out with my friends. And, and I got to my senior year in high school and I had a teacher that says, Steve, what, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? And I said, I really don't know. And so I was, the, I was the youngest of five kids, and my father had told us, each one of his kids, he says, um, if you want to go to college, I'll pay for the first two years of your college at a local community college. Um, my dad was a factory worker, didn't, didn't make a lot of money, but he, he as long as we, we would live at home, and he would, he would provide that for us. Well, I ended up going to community college, not knowing what I wanted to do, and he ended up, or I ended up um, halfway for, for, through the first semester, I flunked out. I had no clue what I wanted to do. And so I, uh, my dad asked me, he goes, what are you gonna do? I says, well, I'll get a job. And so I got a job and I worked at a hardware and a paint and a glass company doing shipping and receiving. And I thought I was making a lot of money. And this was back in 1983. And I started, I worked there for two and a half years. I started making 235 an hour. And two and a half years later, <laughs> I was making 285 an hour. But I was doing manual labor. I didn't like it. So I thought, I got to do something else. And I was reminded of those verses. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. And, and I said, okay, God, if, if you want me to do something else, I'll do that. So I went, back to, I went back to community college, got an associate's degree, had to go back and take some classes that I had flunked out of because I just stopped going to them. And then I ended up um, finishing my associate's degree. And just before the, um, the, I was going to graduate from this, this community college, um, I had a professor, a sociology professor. I really liked him. And he, he went around the class and he asked each, each person in the class, what are you going to do when you, once you graduate? 
And at the time, I was working at a Sherwin-Williams paint store um, because uh, to put myself through college. Because to go back a little bit, when, when I flunked out of college, when I decided to go back, my dad said, well, the offer's off the table. He goes, now you have to pay for it yourself. You can live at home in, in that, but. So anyways, this professor at community college says, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm just going to go and work at Sherman Williams. They offered me a full-time job and all that. And he goes, well, just give me five minutes of your time. And he, he says, come and see me in my office after, after class. So I went to see him, and he said, the, co the community college I went to was part of a big university pro, pro colleges, you know, in the state of New York. And he says, do me a favor. He says, apply to go to the four-year college. And if you decide not to go, that's up to you, but just apply. So I applied, and I decided to go, but still had no idea what I wanted to do. And so I went to, um, I went to orientation, and there was a, 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 a professor there that was talking about social work. And I liked d working with people and, and helping people out and stuff like that. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll do that. I'll major in sociology and social work. So long story short, I went through college. I graduated. And in my senior year, I did an internship at a, at a children's home or a detention center for troubled teens. I'd never dealt with, uh, you know, troubled teens coming from abusive backgrounds and, and things like that. And so it was a great experience, but it was outside of my comfort zone, you know. But God led me in that direction as I was seeking him. And as I continued in that internship, when I graduated, they offered me a job. And I thought, no, this, this isn't the type of work I want to do. But God had other plans. And so he's, he made it very clear. He says, I want you to take the position you're being offered. And so I took the position. I worked there two and a half years in, uh, as a social worker in a unit of boys from age 18 or 8 to 18. And they were placed in the residential program um, from their county. And I worked there, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about patients. I learned a lot about myself. Um, I learned a lot about helping people. But then God led me in a new direction. You know, just about the time you think you're, you're all, you're, just about the time you think you're comfortable, he moved me in a new direction. And an agency in the, in the city that I lived in um, offered me a position working with um, special needs adults. And they, they, they had a residential program. They had an, uh, an employment program. They had um, all different kinds of programs to help um, special needs adults. And I thought, God, I... I've never dealt with that population. But if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. So I went in for the interview. They offered me the position, and I got a tour of the facility that I'd be working in. And I walked out of there, and I said, I can't do this, God. I can't do this. I was outside of my comfort zone. And I worked there. I ended up, I accepted the position. And there were times where I would, I would say, God, are you sure you know what you're doing? Do you, are you sure you know um, what you're doing and you want me here? And each time he made it very clear, this is where I want you to be. I did that for almost four years. I worked for that, that agency. And I worked, then I worked for a couple other agencies. So now the situation is I'm married. I have a career, my wife is a nurse, she has a career, so now I have to go and tell my wife, I think God's calling me into the pastoral ministry. And God had already been preparing my wife, because when I shared that with her, she said, okay, okay. <laughs> now, I, I sought counsel from my pastor, from some other godly, um, people that I, I um, respected, 
And we looked at all different um, places to further my education. I went on to go to seminary. And God led us from Western New York to um, Northeast Ohio, where I went to seminary. And again, going back to when I told you I was in high school, I didn't like school. I didn't like, you know, when I was in high school, I, college, I did what I had to do to pass and all that. And then when I went to seminary, okay, God's saying go back to school. He took me outside my comfort zone. I had been out of school for eight, eight or nine years. And so I went, I applied, I got accepted to the seminary, and I went like the first semester and got to my midterms. And I came home and told my wife, Michelle, I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. And she goes, just, you know, just take your time. And I had some other staff and professors there that would they, they would encourage me and say, you can, you know, you can do this. Long story short, I ended up going. It took me a little longer than the traditional person would take. But um, I had my plans. I was going to go to seminary, get my, my degree, and go back to Western New York because that's where I knew everybody. God had other plans. And he ended up, uh, I ended up t taking three years to do a two-year program. And then God said, well, maybe, maybe I want you to stay at the seminary another year to, um, because I hadn't done like languages like Greek and Hebrew and stuff like that. And a friend of mine from, from Hungary, who was a student at the seminary, he says, hey, Steve, you ever think about staying an extra year? <clears throat> and I said, no, because, because I was done. I, I thought, God, I'm ready to move on. I was comfortable, and I wanted to get, get moving on. So again, long story short, the reason I said no is because I didn't like school. But, but when I was in seminary, I was studying something that I really enjoyed. And so I did better. And, and that kind of stuff. And it's and the other reason I told my friend from Hungary no was because we I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to, to pay for it. And actually we owed the seminary money. And so when I went back and I told my wife, I said, um, our, our friend asked me about if we we would stay an extra year to to get a, a further my education. She goes, well, don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. <coughs> and I said, yeah, well, no. And what happened was I was studying for my exams. And um, I took a study break, put my books down. And I thought, OK, God, I don't know what you want. I just know I'm comfortable where I'm at. Huh? And so, so, but God wouldn't let me pick those books back up. I truly believe this. Until I surrendered my will to his. And I was trusting in him completely <clears throat> with everything. And so I picked the books back up. I started studying again. And I thought, I, I truly know that it was God saying, I want you to stay. I'll provide what you need. And again, I was looking at it from a human standpoint. And to my understanding, again, my wife came back to our apartment, and I shared this with her. And she, she says, "You're not going to believe this." We, a friend of hers, and her had been praying for the last week that if it was God's will that we stay, that that God would change my heart. And that's what God did. He changed my heart and took me outside of my comfort zone. Things don't always work that way. But God is always faithful. He promises that he'll never leave us or forsake us. So you ever been in a situation where you have all your plans laid out and you think everything's all in line and then it doesn't or something happens? Well, we had made plans to stay at the seminary another year. I had to do Greek and Hebrew and those kinds of things. We owed the seminary money, 
and we didn't have the money to pay for the, the next year. But we decided we were going to go with this in faith, and we made all the plans. Well, then I got a letter from the seminary saying, well, you owe us money, and, and we're not going to let you register for classes <coughs> until you pay that. And we couldn't pay it. <coughs> so here we made these plans. We're, we're thinking, okay, God, we're, we're following your will and all that. And he says, er, and then we get this letter. Again, we were part of a seminary community. We lived right on campus in an apartment, and we went to chapel and all that stuff. And, and then God... Um, the president of the seminary. It was a small seminary community. He, Michelle was taking our son and they were going to, to chapel one day. And the president came up and he says, I hear your family staying for another year. And Michelle said she almost started crying because we couldn't because we had gotten the letter and the finances and that kind of stuff. And he goes, the president says, well, did you get a second letter? And Michelle goes, no. And he goes, well, you'll be getting a second letter because the money that you owed, which was at that time was about $1,500 to the seminary and your entire year for school has been paid for. And he said it was from an, anon an anonymous donor. And again, God was taking me outside of where I was comfortable and putting me in a situation where I was uncomfortable. But when God wants us to grow, I believe he does that. We just need to be surrendered to him. And I say we just need to. It's not always easy. It's not always, okay, you just need to do this. Life is full of challenges. And I know that all of you men know this. We've all faced, you know, our different challenges in life and all that. But, you know, we, we trust in God, and we trust in His Word and His promises, and that uh, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Um, and he, he will give us the strength to do it. And, you know, life goes on with all different kinds of stories and situations. We have four children. Our oldest in the Air Force, our next son was the challenge of our life. I love my children dearly, but one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, my wife and ever have, have had to do, is to ask one of our children to leave our home. Just because they weren't, they were making some really dumb decisions. <clears throat> and God took me into that place of being uncomfortable to surrender completely to Him. It's interesting because there was a time with this particular son that I never thought that I would ever have a relationship with him again because of the decisions that he was making and the fact that we had to ask him. Well, I, I, I say that kind of nicely. We had to kick him out. God used that time to help me grow, to help my wife grow, even to help my son grow. And again, God, things don't always work out like we would like them to, but this last January, I had the opportunity to officiate my son's wedding. Him and his, his well, his wife now, um, asked me if I would do that. And our relationship has been completely restored. Um, but I never thought that would happen. God is faithful as long as we are willing to trust Him. I'd like to say that life in our path is, I use the word hunky-dory. And it goes, goes well. We moved here in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, and I had some serious conversations with God. Are you, are you sure you know what you're doing? God took me away from a ministry that I had pastored a church for 19 years. I love the people, I love the area, but I was comfortable. 
and God says, it's time to move. We moved. Um, God worked out the details. Um, we moved here in 2020. <laughs> In 2022, in June of 2022, we received one of the hardest phone calls I've ever received in my life. Our oldest son called my wife to say that our youngest grandson had passed away. My oldest son had 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 two two children. Uh, a son who was at the time three and uh, another son the youngest son was fi 15 months and God um, he helped us through that situation it was a situation where um, they had a pool in their backyard and they don't know how the child got into the pool but again God is faithful and God takes us into situations or allows us I should say to go into situations that we're not comfortable with so that we can see his faithfulness rely on him for strength and know that he is always there for us like I said sometimes things work out I shared the story of my son who we call him the prodigal and God worked out that but sometimes things don't work out the way that we want them to, or we would desire them to. But God is always faithful. Trust in the Lord with everything. And I encourage you, I challenge you. If there's something in, in your life that, that you need to trust God with, give it to Him. Surrender it to Him. Don't always, don't look at things from a human perspective. It's hard because um, things, very often in life, things don't make sense. But God doesn't promise always to make sense to us. But he is in control. And I heard somebody say, even before, um, when we were, when, before I got up here to speak, that God is still on the throne, no matter what we face whether it's with our country, whether it's with our world, whether it's with our families, um, whatever situations we're facing. Um, very often when God wants us to grow, he moves us into a position of being uncomfortable. I'm not, when, I, when God called me into pastoral ministry, one of the things that my wife did was even though she was fully supportive of it, she says, are you sure? And the reason she said that was because she knew that I wasn't a public speaker. She knew that I got nervous talking in front of people. And she goes, you realize if you become a pastor, you're gonna have to stand up in front of people. And I said, yeah, I know that. But with God's help, I can do it. Amen. And when I was in seminary, one of the things that happened was that we had to do preaching. And when I did the preaching, when I got up into my, pre our fir my first preaching class, I would stand behind this big old pulpit, and we had notes. And one of the things with public speaking is you try to keep it. eye contact. Well, I was always afraid that with my notes, if I looked down, and then I looked up to have eye contact, that I'd lose my place. Get all flustered and all that. So what I did, the first sermon I ever preached, is I took my finger and I would follow along so that I wouldn't lose my place. After we were done in the class, the, the professor was the one that critiqued, and he said, um, he said, you know, you had good content, you had good illustrations, you had good, you know, backed it up with scripture and all that. He goes, but you might not want to use your finger to keep your place. And he says, but that will come with time. He says, I know that you are uncomfortable, but that's when God will use you. So just some words of encouragement from my own life experience. That um, I hope God blesses you.
Thank you. Amen. Thank you.